Yo, Breezy. Yo. It's Draft Miss Eve. Is that a thing? I don't know. It is now. You ready to get this? Let's get it, baby. What's going on, everybody? We are back. The BAM show is in full effect. And like Mike said, it is Draft Eve. I just would have went with Draft Eve. <laughs> I I mean, I don't know any other like holidays that are use the word Eve other than like Christmas Eve and New Year's Eve. And it, it's multiple syllables. Well, so why you I say it's Draft do. Year's Eve? You went Draft Miss Eve. You just it's just Draft Eve. Draft Day Eve. Draft Day Eve. Draft, yeah. Draft I wanted the two syllables. New Year's, Christmas. Okay. I wanted the two. So draft day Eve. There you go. Now I know how to say it. I could dig That's it. I like that. I like that. Mike, we've whew, we've we've done some we've been digging deep. And Boy. it it's probably all for nothing. But I tell you what, it was fun. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like it was definitely it was definitely fun times. Uh, you know. I think I'm going to continue to make myself go out to the senior bowl because I like, I like the, the hands-on getting to know these young fellas before they get to the draft and things like that. So I, I think I'm going to continue to do that. I, you know, I'm going to pull back on a lot of stuff that I've been doing, but I think that's the one thing I'm not going to pull back on. I like the college players and I like to talk to them before they get the big bucks. You know what I mean? It's also when they're most accessible, bro. I ain't going to lie to you. I got a lot of people's contact information, their agents and all that stuff. And let me tell you, once they get that extension, bro, they yeah. act like they don't know a brother no more. Listen, bro, they yes, sir, you. They, like, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's yeah, it's super dope, you know? Um, so, yeah, that's, that's, that's what I plan to do. Um, but we've done our research, and now it's time to really prepare for this draft. Uh, I think we both are in agreement that we have no idea what the san francisco 49ers are going to do right we have no idea what they're going to do right uh, um but you know the last episode we went through who these top 22 players are and we decided to come up with some guys that may fall to the 49ers the fall guys we should have downloaded like a sound effect like doo -doo. Doo -doo. <laughs> like a splat yeah, yeah. that would have been dope now that i think about it well, it's okay. It's okay. So Mike, man, like let's 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 get to these fall these fall guys. Like um we got four players and we've talked about them. Maybe maybe we haven't really talked much about them. Um now that I think about it. Now <laughs> pick 31, Mike. You you're going to get a top player depending on the position you're looking at right like you're not going to get the top tackle they're going to go early this is the premier this is where you get your tackles you get them early in the draft get your quarterbacks early in the draft i'm hoping teams reach for more quarterbacks i'm hoping 10 quarterbacks go in round one <laughs> like you know what i mean this will help us but mike man like if you if the 49ers can't draft a top tier tackle if a top tackle doesn't fall to the 49ers where do you think they go? And they stay in the first round. They don't move out. If uh, so, if a uh, if a top tackle falls to the Niners but doesn't come to us, no. If a top do tackle go? doesn't fall to the Niners, where do you think the where Niners think are going to go? Niners go. Yeah, I still think they stick to the trenches. I, I I listen. We can sit here and debate all day long what we think. Uh, we can debate all day long where we think we're going to go. But John Lynch, and I believe to a point, Kyle Shanahan even believes that the draft is heavily decided in the trenches. Like, uh, not the draft, but like the success of a team. It all comes back to the trenches. I, I believe that is the core of what they believe. Uh, 
And so whether it be offense or defense, they're not going anywhere else. I don't, I don't think for a second that there's a possibility that they don't go to the trenches. Uh, if I had to put money on it, it's offensive line or defensive line. We are we are definitely getting somebody in the trenches for the 49ers. Yeah. All right. So let's start. All right. Um, let's rank these players. We'll do it right now. I'm giving you four players, and I want you to one, two, three, four. Okay. I'm going to give you the four players, and then you give me the order, and then we'll go from there. All right. Cooper DeGene. Johnny. So, Johnny Newton. Cooper DeGene. Cornerback or defensive back Cooper DeGene. Defensive tackle Johnny Newton. Uh, offensive lineman and Marius Mims. Offensive tackle. And Nate Wiggins, cornerback. And you're asking me. Just give me your thing? ranking number on these four players. I don't care about PFF. I don't care about any of that. Give me Mike Andrews ranking on these four players. In order. Yep. One, two, three, four. Who would be one? Who would be two? Who would be three? Who would be four? All right. Give me a name, and I'm going to tell you the number. Uh, Cooper DeGene. DeGene is the corner, right? Yeah, he's the defensive back. He's the versatile defensive back. Safety slash corner. Nickel. Um, <laughs> he can play yeah. ball. I would put him at three. Okay. Uh, Jerzon Johnny Newton, defensive tackle. Now, that's the DT. Mm-hmm. I would put him at two. Okay. I would put him at two based off of this list. Yeah. Uh, let's go Nate Wiggins, cornerback. Oh, now this is my guy. Uh, Clemson. I want to put him at one. I'm not going to lie to you. Nate Wiggins is probably a top three overall corner in this entire draft. Uh, but there's a reason he's going to make our list for today. So I'm yeah. going to I'm going to put him at number one. I don't know if he's top three, but he's definitely top top five. Okay. Definitely top five. Mm-hmm. But he could in be top three. three. Uh, Marius Mims. So he's gonna be four, he's gonna be three, no four. No, I did. I, I thought I gave four out already. I, you didn't say Johnny Newton was two. Did you say he was four? Oh, defensive tackle was two. Right. I put I put you put Nate Wiggins one, one uh-huh. so Mims will be four. And Mims is what position? Let everybody know. He's the right tackle. Okay. Okay. So you got to have four. Now, why do we have these guys falling? So all of these guys have dealt with some type of an injury. Mm -hmm. Okay. So just to make it clear, like my top three corners, and the reason why I said Nate would probably be four or five, but my top three, definitely four, but my top three corners would be Quinion Mitchell, Tyrion Arnold, Kool-Aid McKinstry, and then Nate Wiggins. Not that I, with Nate Wiggins you'll get the speed, but his frame. It's 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 his it's his body type. Like, will it be able will he be able to make and tackle these running backs, tackle these guys, uh, these bigger guys out there? And that's what that's what concerns me. You saw him run. Uh let's let's go over their injuries. So let's start with number one, because you talked about Nate Wiggins. Let's talk about his injury. I think he got injured at the combine, if I'm not mistaken. He was running the 40. He ran it once, and that was it. He was shut down for the day. What was that injury? For Nate Wiggins, right? Yeah. So, all right. Hip flexor. That's what it was. Okay. But he he's such a, a talented guy. Tall, He's fast, very talented. With, um, You know, he... He's a guy that is tough to get separation against and things like that. He need them uh, hips, dog. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and I and I think that teams are going to ask him to gain a little bit of weight, but like you said, that hip flexor, that hip flexor, man. But that but that came from running as fast as you can, like you know what I'm saying, in a straight line. He's not going to be running as fast as he can in straight lines all the time. Um, when you look up when when I look up this kid. 
I say to myself, like why, like I, I just like the other guys better. And the reason why, so so for me, and you put, we, we, and we'll go to Cooper DeGene uh, a little bit later, but you got Nate Wiggins as the number one out of all four of these prospects that are falling. So I do. I, I, I got it. You know, I need more from you. I need, I need, I need more of the why. All right. So when you put together a list of weaknesses for a player, right, you'll be hard pressed to come up with six weaknesses for him. So obviously it's the physicality because of his size, right? I think it's hard pressed to come up with six weaknesses for all these players. Six is a big number. <laughs> well, all right. Let, I, you'll be hard pressed to come up with three weaknesses for him. If okay. once you eliminate size, so physicality and and size, I I'm gonna tie together, right? He may not be good against the run. I'm still willing to attribute that to size. And then he can tend to get handsy at the top of the route. Those are really my only issues with this kid. That's it. I don't I don't have any other, like he's got great feet. He's instinctive, ideal height, good length right um his upside right that's another thing that's going to be huge when you're drafting a player in the first round you want to know that there's more than what you've seen in the bottle in the cup in the container he's got more and you, and you when you watch him you feel like i can tap into that excellent vision supreme eye discipline um he plays quick he responds well to players he reacts well he doesn't need safety help impeccable body control right but the once you get past the size and maybe the tackling against the run there's no other issues i i, I agree with that mike but we talk about nfl players we're not talking about college players anymore you're talking about big body wide receivers it's talking about you know can he cover them deep down the field possibly but if he's if 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 he if he doesn't have the strength to deal with you know these guys that are going to be looking to initiate contact think about 49ers wide receivers that like to initiate contact think guys like Debo Samuel he's not tackling Debo Samuel luckily they'll be on the same team but there's going to be receivers in the league like Debo is what I'm trying to say Brandon Ayuk Brandon Ayuk is tough to te- tough to bring down as well like and so Again, if the Niners do draft him, they will be on the same team. So he'll get practice at that. But there's other receivers like A.J. Brown. That's a big guy. Like, think about or the guys he's going to have to cover. D.K. Metcalf. D.K. Oh, too. God dang it. Like, that, you know, <laughs> I was saving, saving him for last. But, yes. Like, yes. Yeah, and and, and I'm, I'm thinking NFC West, NFC. I could care less about the AFC. But I'm thinking of those guys, those receivers, them dogs in the NFC, man. It, they, they, there's some dogs out there. Can he run with them stride for stride? Yes. Uh, right. But he's definitely – speed is not an issue when it comes to him. I don't know if we can get any special team action out of him. But what I do know is um, – and I'm going to try to get this going here. I don't know why PFF sucks on this browser. It just doesn't work right on this browser. Um, just bear with me. I do want to see where he lines up. And so, yeah, he's an outside guy. He, he played five, got five snaps in the slot. <clears throat> he's a good corner, Mike. I, he, not going to take that away. He's a first-round corner. But he's falling. You wanna, so the question. Want to share the screen or no? Nah, not not here. I'm, I'm I'm I don't like this browser. Hold on, I gotta open up a different browser. Hey, I got a question. Yes. What do you think about this for the fall? Oh, that's dope. Okay. All right. Maybe that one fall guys. All right. So he's a fall guy because of the hip flexor injury, and teams might not take a shot on him so he might fall so you could get a top receiver at 31 if he falls all right um excuse me a top defensive back top cornerback if he falls so he's not bad not a bad prospect at all mike is right he's a first round cornerback he's, he's well in man or zone like his th- agree so much to not like hate about this guy 
I can be honest and say that about every one of these four guys. <laughs> yes, that's true. That is very true. But there's some things that you might feel are take more precedent that you don't want to take a chance on those guys, right? Let's go to number two. Let's go to Johnny Newton. Let's look up Johnny Newton's injury. I have Cooper Dijon's. I could look up Johnny Newton's if you want. Uh, Johnny Newton here. I'll spell his okay. name right. So Johnny Newton's, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, so he had the foot injury at the combine. And that's something that could make him fall because I'm it's sorry, very, very The recent. Liz Frank injury, yes. Yeah. And you know who else we could have put on this list could have been another four guy candidate? Kool Aid McKinstry. Kool Aid McKinstry. Like this, this is our show. We we gonna do this however we want to do it. So I'm gonna add Kool Aid McKinstry to this because he also had the Liz Frank injury, but he did perform at his pro day, and then had the surgery. Crazy guy. What 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 position is dominating at this at this right now? Say that again. What position is dominating? At the at the fall guys. Oh, the corners. This this is another corner. This is another corner. Yeah. This is amazing, though, now that I think about it. So John, um, Johnny Newton had a Jones fracture. Right? Mm-hmm. Not Liz Frank. Um, I, ju I just have it listed as a foot injury. I don't know exactly what it was. Yeah, it says a Jones fracture. I think that's what that's what Kool Aid McKinstry had as well. Right. So that that stopped him from working out the combines. Um, I still think he's a first round at the very very latest early second round guy. Mm -hmm. You know what they, I'm saying? They had the same injury, Mike Kool Aid and uh, Johnny Newton. Oh, okay, okay. Um, so yeah, yeah the foot so injury. like his his tape down the stretch for Johnny Newton suffered a little bit because of this injury. This is my uh, number one it, guy, Mike. It carried over into, you know, it carried over into combine time. Uh, and so some teams might be hesitant. A lot of teams might feel, well, maybe we can get him later just be just because of that. But once you get outside of that, this guy is phenomenal. 6'2", 304. Um, I mean. He's great in run defense, uh, great in pass defense. Hold on, Mike. I, I got to get up my PFF because I want you to know when we talk about these corners, I want you to know that I, I care about their the rate that they give up these passes. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like completions. <laughs> I think that's highly important. Um, and when you see when you see quarterbacks not go after these guys, that lets me know that these dudes are, are monsters. And he had a good game against Michigan. Um and you're talking, about, you're talking about Johnny or Jerzon Newton, right? The defensive tackle? I'm sorry. I'm oh. I'm talking about Kool Aid McKinstry. My bad. Oh you Okay. Oh, we on no. McKinstry. I'm, I, no. My apologies. No, I'm you're on Johnny McKinstry. Newton. Go ahead. Oh. Keep going. Keep going. I'm sorry. I'm still gonna look him up, but I gotta get I gotta get PFF off of this because it doesn't work well off of um. Yeah. This guy, uh, a phenomenal first step. Um, he, he that that twitchy body. Uh, he can dominate offensive linemen. Um, he's made plenty of splash plays. If you look up a highlight reel, you're gonna be like, that can't be, like. That's not sustainable. Super instinctive. Um, his upside is crazy. Um, He's good against the run disruptive. and a pass rusher. Like right, right. His his knocks are height and length. He's six right? two, right? Yeah, only six two, two ninety five ish. Um, and there are times during a game where it's like, where is he going? What's he doing? Right, like you'll be watching the third quarter of a game, and be like, yo, he started so good. What happened to him? Now, I don't know if that's him resting up because he'll come back on strong late in games and things like that. So his motor is going to be in question. Um, and, you know, like if if he's going up against a physical run defender, if he's trying to read the play, it'll look like he's getting dominated. If he knows the run play, that won't happen. But if he's trying to read the play and he's resting on if it's a run or pass, that's when you can see him a little bit, um, un his uncertainty you know that that's where that's where uh, offensive linemen can really take advantage of them, but this is this is a phenomenal player here um, with Jerzon Newton. Um, there's there's a lot to love about this guy, not a lot to not like about him. Um, the only thing is, how is he going to do against these bigger offensive linemen? You know, if he's going up against 300 pound offensive linemen, and he lacks that height and length, 
Um, how's he going to play with his arms, his hands, the hand placement? Gonna be something that's going to be really, really important. I mean, Mike, not every yeah. offensive lineman is going to be tall. I mean, look at Aaron Donald. He wasn't 6'3". He was dangerous, right. though. So this mm-hmm. is what Jazan Newton possesses. Like, this is the guy that could be probably the most dangerous defensive tackle uh, in the draft. I, I, people like Byron Murphy, the second, and I love him too. Um, but if Jazan falls, you're going to get a dangerous team. And I'm not comparing him to Aaron Donald. He's, he's a little different, but he kind of resembles that frame. You know what I'm saying? He's that yeah, frame. Absolutely. He's not the big... Uh, what's the dude that just retired from the Eagles? He's not. He's not that frame. Can't think of his name. Um, Jesus, almost said Fletcher Cox. Fletcher Cox, right? He's not that frame. He, that's not his frame. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. He's more mm-hmm. of the Aaron Donald frame. Line me up, Solomon um, Thomas. Solomon Thomas, like. But this dude is is an elite. He had 43 pressures, Mike. He is way more disruptive than Solomon Thomas ever dreamt about. I don't know why you even mentioned him, but I get it. <laughs> uh, size. Only size. I promise you it was only size. That was it. That was it. Mike, 43 pressures. Come on. He only had eight sacks, but this dude was making the quarterback hurry the ball. And believe it or not, Mike, at 6'2 and whatever and a half inches tall, hit two batted down passes. I'll take that. Yes. He finished with 48 but- tackles. Um, and 32 of them were stops in the backfield. So the bad um, passes are the successful plays where he got his hand up and hit the ball, right? Like yes. he's so instinctive. He knows I'm not going to get there, but it's a pass play. He jumps up for, for it all the time. Like I'm not going to get there, but I'm going to try. And, I'm gonna, and if it's coming in my lane, I'm going to play that part. And so check this out, Mike. In a 4-3 defense, guess where else he plays? Don't tell me he plays edge sometimes. On the ends. So Mike... What I'm trying to what I'm trying to what I'm trying to suggest is I'm not comparing him to Aaron Donald, but this is the build. This is the Aaron Donald build. I don't know if the Rams are gonna pass up on him. They're gonna probably try to get Byron Murphy or him. But if the Rams do something stupid and allow this kid to fall to the San Francisco 49ers, thank you, McVay. Thank you, McVay. Thank you. I'll give him my thank you card already. Like it's it's an automatic thank you for me, Mike. If we could get if if he can fall due to and see we these guys are falling due to injuries. I I I really believe the reason why was that sound. The reason why they fall, guys. Oh oh, you want the sound? I got it. I got it. Is due to these injuries that they've possessed throughout their you know collegiate career, um or whatnot um or you know so again you the know injuries. Who this guy reminds me of man who. I don't know if you remember him, Marvin Austin. I don't. Marvin Austin uh, with the Broncos. I don't. He, went, he was at North Carolina, uh, drafted in 2011. He played for the Dolphins, Cowboys, and Broncos. Marvin Austin is a really, really good pro comparison for this guy. I like it. I got to look him up, but I like it. There's not going to be a lot of stats. I'm talking about just build. Just oh, build. build. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was right. there was a lot of a lot of love for Marvin Marvin Austin. Now he he didn't do a whole lot when it came to the NFL, but that build is there. This guy was uh, Marvin Austin ended up being the second round pick, fifty two overall, uh, because of injuries coming out of college. But that that just shows you that you know when guys come into into the league with this with the stature, but the production and the college size, they can tend to fall. That's exactly why we're doing this show. Uh, if it weren't for the injuries and things like that that held uh, Marvin Austin back that he would have been a first round pick. All right, let's go to the number three guy, Cooper DeGene. This is you ranked number three. Uh, cornerback or defensive back out of Iowa. His injury, he had a broken fibula, which he's recovering from, so he didn't do any testing. Um, and he hurt. He got hurt toward the end of last year, so uh, that's kind of what messed him up. Now, here's the cool thing about him. This is the most versatile defensive player in the in the draft. Um, and the fact that he can play outside corner, nickel back, and both safety spots, I don't think a team cares about this broken fibula. Like I, <laughs> I'm hoping they do, and and they pass up. But if he's there at 31, we got we got a tough decision to see who the Niners would pick because I don't know how do you pass up on a cornerback 
or a weapon like this. I mean, this dude can play center field. He can play in the box. He can play outside. He can play inside. Like, how how do you do that? How do you pass up on that? You Two interceptions last year, four PBUs. He, Mike, no. he, he was targeted 46 times. He gave up 20 receptions, 43.5% reception rate on this guy. That's pretty good. You and and my pro comp for this guy for those of you if you if you want to put a name to it only if you want to put a name to it, Chauncey Gardner Johnson. Eerily similar to him. E- eerily similar to him, man. Like this this is going to be the guy, man. Hybrid slot corner safety in the NFL. Um, that that that's what he's going to be, man. Um, outside, he he can get better there. He can get better. Absolutely. There. Um, His strength is safety. Honestly, that's where I would yes. want him to play. Safety and nickel, I think he would he would be okay. But outside, uh, they want to see a little bit more twitch. But that's the only knock on him, other than the injury. Other than the injury, he's a willing physical tackler. Um, he loves making plays at the line of scrimmage. Don't make him be the eighth man in the box. Like he, he's going to get you there. You know what I mean? He's got ph- phenomenal ball skills. I know you said what only two picks. Mm-hmm. Only, only two picks, but that that was last year. Like this, this kid is good. He's a ball hawk. He's got good hands. Um, you don't want to throw at him if you don't have to. You don't want to. Yeah, he's, a, he's he'd be a solid prospect for any team that he goes to. I I I'm just curious to see which team is going to be willing to pass up on him. And I guarantee you, he's not getting past Philadelphia. Uh, there's no well, way. And look at who I compared him to, right? Chauncey Garner Chauncey Johnson. Garner Johnson. Yeah. So, you know, like that that's that's kind of a, a thing here. Wayne, this is the fastest 26 minutes of my entire life. I can't believe we're at 27 minutes already, bro. Me neither, bro. This show is going by fast. Guys, make sure you guys like this joint. Don't feel free to subscribe to both channels as well. We got a couple of players that we still got to get to. Um, fall guy. All right. So, number four, Amarius Mims, Amarius Mims, left right okay. tackle, excuse me, out of Georgia. Now, his latest injury happened at the combine, and I believe it was an ankle, high ankle sprain. And he's getting surgery, a certain type of surgery, to repair the high ankle sprain. So he'll be good to go at the beginning of the season. Now, let me just go out and say this. If there's if we had to pick of all the guys that was likely to fall to the forty niners, it's him. Um, he got injured not once but twice in his only season as a starter. Yeah. So you know, and like you said, he's going out getting the corrective surgery and all that stuff. If there's anybody that's going to fall, it's him. So you got the lack of experience, and then when we did put you in as a starter, your durability didn't hold up. This this is the guy. Those are the only negatives, though. You can't I, say anything about his play. Go ahead. No, no. I was I was I was going to allude to that. I mean, he just doesn't have a lot of games. Uh, he doesn't have a lot of snaps under his belt. I mean, two hundred eighty six, six hundred and thirty eight total offensive snaps. Excuse me. No, no. You're good. You're good. In three years, seven three forty. In three, say it again one more time for me. In in three years, that's nothing. That is nothing. Again, one year as a starter, two injuries. Teams are going to question your durability and availability, and and availability, and they don't want to take that risk in the first round. But not in the first round. You cannot let get past you if you're the Niners sitting at thirty one and he falls to you guys. You got to get this kid. You got to get this kid. Wayne got me really excited. I don't know if we were still recording or not. We started talking about him at the either at the end of the show or, or, or after the show was over. And he you got me hyped. End. Yeah, you man. Look, this hyped. kid is he's a, he's an athlete. For t- the 340 pounds, 6'7", this kid is athletic. I think he ran like a 5'1'5 with a 1-something, mm-hmm. 7 1-7, something split. I could look it up, but it was quick. I was like, damn, <laughs> this big fella can move. Like, <laughs> um, But again, it's going to come down to what he did on film. And on film, I mean, he gave up zero pressures, but he didn't play a lot. You know what I mean? So Hold up, hold up. 
if he gave up zero pressures, did that mean that he gave up zero sacks too? Well, yes, for sure. Give me a second. He gave up one pressure. I mean, you could you can give up a sack if it's like a busted, like 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 uh, Spencer Burford in the in the Super Bowl, right? That's he pressure. Wrong way, but that pressure is the sack. Right, right. You know what I mean? Um, he was recorded with one pressure. Uh, and, and throughout his career, throughout the games that he played, he only gave up four, but no sacks. The quarterbacks, they don't even hit the quarterback when he's out there. Mm. They just hurry. They, 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 And I think he'll he'll probably struggle with the speedier guys, like the Hassan Reddicks. Like they would give him a little, because he has to get, you know, he has to get, deal with those bends out there. You know what I mean? So, um. <laughs> This is such an exciting player, man. You know, like, there's, there, it comes a point in time when you're on a stack team like the 49ers are, and it's like, where can we get better if we can give someone time to get acclimated to the system and the speed of the NFL? He ran a 507, it's, Mike. That's 507. Freaking, that's freaking 507, ridiculous. Yeah. I thought 178 you were split was his split. There it is. Yep. You said 17-something. Yeah, yeah, you called it. You 176 called it. And, is what I thought of. His best game in college was against Ohio State. You know, I, I I didn't I didn't want to see it, but that's his best game in college. A dominant performance against Ohio State, one of the best teams in college football. Like, come on, bro. Come yeah. on, man. And like you see, any him, any plays right tackle. Yeah, come on, man. Come on, you ain't, bro. You ain't moving them. You ain't doing nothing. This is a mountain out there. And by the way, you ever seen this kid with a shirt off? That sounds plausible, right? That did sound plausible, but it's cool. I think Wayne. I know where you're going. No body fat on this kid. Like next to no, people. Yeah. People are always impressed with Nick Bosa. He don't even have Nick Bosa. Don't even have pecs. Like his shoulders make him look like he's hungry because Nick Bosa's shoulders come up past his pecs. Right. Like it, there's no chest with Nick Bosa. This kid has not an ounce of wasted body on him, bro. Like if you're talking just pure athlete, there's two guys in this entire draft that just physically get it marvin harrison jr and him mm. that's it that's it like this guy if you could like go into a lab and design your offensive tackle this is what he would come out looking like this is this is the build this is the body fat percentage this is him the and size the everything like yeah I, and i agree uh and we didn't talk about his strength we didn't like this kid is a strong dude again he gave up four pressures out of 638 snaps mike out of 638 snaps only four of those were pressures and they were just and they were hurries that's like 0.25 percent of the like that that's nothing that that is nothing it's less than 0.25 it might be 0.15 like it, it's nothing i know and go ahead he reacts to speed rushers so well as, a, he as does. an offensive lineman he does it would be but that's if they're if that that's if he recognizes them as just a speed rusher i think mm -hmm. the ones that have speed and bend will give him problems okay that's fair because now that's he fair. has to get that fair. pad level he can't get too low with his pad level but he he plays with good pad level he, he does he but he but when you're dealing with bend it's it's not allowing them to get the outside leverage on you because then they're going to get around you at some point if you're not at the right level. Mm -hmm. But that's, and that's what's phenomenal about this kid. He gets it up here in his head, right? Yeah, so he gets he, football. He does. he does. I'm on the right side and this guy is a bull rusher. He gets prepared and he's going to have his leverage. For ready. bull rushing. Yes. But right. he has he, to learn the different types of bull rushers is what I'm trying to get to. Yeah, he has to learn yeah. a different type of speed rushers. He has to learn a different type of combo rushers. He has to learn a different mm -hmm. type of t the tacticians. But you get him in this camp with a Nick Bosa, he going to learn a day. Like, you get what I mean? Yeah. Well, forget Nick Bosa for a second. And no disrespect to Nick Bosa. You get him in this camp with a with, Chris Forrester. Oh, yeah. Bro. Oh, yeah. Oh. This and, would be the best lump of clay Chris Forrester has ever had to mold. And and I say that with no disrespect to Trent Williams, right? Trent Williams was a finish. He didn't, he didn't mold. mold Chris, yeah. yeah. Exactly. This would be Chris Forrester's 
version of Nick Bosa for Chris Kosarek. Like, yeah. this is that guy. But this here, is the counter to that. But it, 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 the only issue is experience. And so an injury, obviously, that's, that's you know. So my thing is this. My question to you is this. Trey Lance was a ball of clay for Kyle Shanahan, but he was inexperienced. He didn't have enough experience coming out of college. Does that same rule apply to other positions? Because I feel like it only really applies to quarterbacks. I, I feel like you can get a running back that played one year and they could be dominant in the NFL. You get you can get an offensive lineman and they could be dominant in the NFL. But a quarterback needs those reps. So with a quarterback, you do need to see more. Like, and this is not to diminish Trey Lance at all. His entire collegiate career, he only had 318 pass attempts. That's what I'm saying. This guy's got more than twice that much at a at a tackle position. And so, that's what so it's more football played. Yes. I wouldn't worry about him not playing football for those that are worried. I, like that's I mean it's it's a fair it's a fair concern. It's but if fair, he comes to you at thirty one. Yeah. I, bro. Like, right. But there's gonna be teams I, I I I can see the Dallas Cowboys taking him at twenty five. Absolutely one hundred he's not getting past the Cowboys. If <laughs> If he, the, if he gets past the Cowboys, he's a there's another phenomenal player right there, and he's coming to San Francisco. Yeah. If if he falls to 31, yeah, you sprint. Yeah. To turn that card in, with or they, they they might even trade up. I I don't know, but 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 you're right. You know what I'm saying? We're yeah. This is tough. This is tough because the last person that we just added to the list before we dip up out of hey. here is right. Kool Aid? Oh, Kool Aid. I didn't hear what you said. I thought you told me to wait. Oh, oh no. <laughs> I said Kool Aid. Yeah. I, yeah. Got my, I got the echo because my kids were up when I did the other show. Yeah. Yeah. Kool Aid. Kool Aid McKinstry, who I have ranked higher than Nate Wiggins. Who you tripping, bro? You Yo, tripping, so this is a 4 4 guy. He ran a 4 4 with a Jones fracture in his foot. Just want to put that out there. He ran a 4 4 in pain. Just want to put that out there. Can you imagine a four 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 or four four five? Can you imagine if he was like fresh? Now this kid is not the guy that's going to be built up speed. He's good press man. He's good in coverage. He's good in zone, right? And he, the the playmaking as far as the interceptions, that's not going to be there because nobody's throwing to him. <laughs> you, you, I'm curious. Wait, wait, wait. Time out. Time out. Sidebar. Pretend the camera's not on right now. Okay. You have McKinstry as your third corner in this draft. I do. So you got Arnold and Mitchell. I got Mitchell, Mitchell, Arnold, McKinstry. I got them Alabama boys one and two. Over Wiggins and DeJon. So DeJon, I I really have him as a safety. A safety. Okay. 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 That's on me. That's what, that's fair. Okay. I'm with you. All right. I can rock with that. I like that. I like it. Okay. So it's it's he's listed as a corner, but you draft him, he's gonna play safety right away in somebody's system. Mm-hmm. Um, he only gave up one touchdown in 2023. He's only given up three touchdowns in his three years. He's given up a touchdown a season. <laughs> Come on, bro. Come on, bro. 1,830 1, snaps. I I just I I have him better than Wiggins. I speed is not going to be that. This is the build that the Niners like. 6'1, 195. That's the build. It's 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 5'11 to 6'1. That's what they want out there on the outside as corners. It's something about the way they're able to turn those hips, right? I don't think they go for the big I like, you know, I like Kyrie um Kyrie Jackson out of Oregon, but he's 6'3, 6'4, like nah. It, they're not gonna experiment there anymore. They, they did that with uh Kyle Shanahan did that with your boy. Wasn't he like 6'3? They're not going to do that anymore. Yeah, I'm not going to say his name because people hate on me when I do that. No, 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 I'm not hating. I, this wasn't even that. I was just saying as far as it made sense why we don't go that route. I don't think Kyle likes the build. Do they have the length and the reach to cover? Yes. But it's all about being able to get those hips turned around, the the D to the hip, <laughs> like all of that. Like the hip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I got and, you. I'm and this is where Kool-Aid comes in. And so – 
because of the speed is probably why I got him ranked three. But come on, this dude gave up three touchdowns in three seasons, literally. Yeah. And 2022 was a better year for him than 2023. But again, we talked about the injury. So, you know, that's going to that's gonna play a factor into all of this stuff. This kid has got good, uh, great upside, good speed, great, great feet. Uh, he can turn to run, press man guy, um, long arms, tracks the ball when downfield. You know, like he's, he's got it all. And you, here's the thing we have to remember when we're judging these guys. None of them are finished products. None of them are in their physical or even mental primes. So these guys are only going to get better with the, in their careers in the NFL. you got to have enough patience to develop them. And if you bring a guy like Kool-Aid McKinstry to the 49ers, he's not going to come in day one and overtake the Amador Lenore. He's not going to overtake Javarius Ward. He's probably not even going to come in and take overtake a guy like um, – uh, what's the guy we just got from the Panthers? Uh, uh, oh, Rocky uh, Singh? Oh. No, not Yasin. Uh, not Rock. Uh, the other guy. Yadam? I, 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 yeah, Yadam. Yadam. He's from yeah. the Saints, I thought. Well, oh, yeah. I said the Panthers, the same division. My bad. My bad. My bad. Isaac Yad- Yadam. Yeah. He's not even going to come in and overtake those guys right away. But you have the patience to let this kid develop and hone his skills. That's when he becomes a dangerous player. That's when he comes in and he shines. So I, I like that a lot. I like that a lot, man. Um, he's he's a really, really good guy. Um, he's got to get his work ethic up. You know what I'm saying? Um, I don't know how many picks he has. A lot of people are going to look at a corner and look at the stat box and say, oh, how many interceptions did he He's not going to wow you there. I don't, I don't know. What not, the neither, did, neither did Charverius Ward. Before and, he exactly, until last that's what year, I was gonna say, right? So I'm not, I'm not even gonna let that bother me because they can grow into that. But, but you know here's his, here's his reception rate though, right? So forty four point four. We talked about that. I think Cooper Dijon was a little bit higher, right? But he's been, he's only targeted thirty six times last year, and overall, that reception rate forty seven point five. He was, tar- he's been targeted one hundred and twenty times, and only given up fifty five receptions, Mike. This is this is, and 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 before we dip up out of here, because I, I I gotta get going. But before we dip up out of here, I I do want to look up Nate Wiggins. I felt like I didn't give him the fear. I didn't have my setup up right, and I do want to give him his 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 props. So Nate Wiggins, one thousand two hundred and seventy one snaps. We did want to talk about his snaps. Um, <clears throat> right, but he he had two interceptions. So Wiggins has two career interceptions. Kool Aid McKinstry has. Uh, two career interceptions. Uh, he uh, Nate Wiggins has twelve PBUs. Kool Aid McKentry had seventeen PBUs. Reception rate. That's where we're going, right? That's what. That's what I'm looking for. Forty six point four. He's been targeted ninety seven times, giving up forty five. So Kool Aid got the better stats. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? Without that speed factor, you dig? Mm-hmm. So it's like it's 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 weird. Now I'm not gonna look up Terry and Arnold and and Quinion Mitchell because we ain't getting them dudes. But and I'm sure the but I think all the numbers would be super similar if I did look them up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. And you know you have you have a uh, when you when you comparing Wiggins, you know he didn't play. He wasn't a starter uh, in 2021. Mm-hmm. He only played in like seven, six or seven games. With Iowa that year, yeah, Kool Aid came um, in. When you come to my, when you go to Alabama, you know, after your after your turn, it's your turn. Like you know, what I'm saying, mm-hmm. if you could start amongst the dogs in Alabama, you good to go. Mm-hmm. But yeah, man, great, great, great show, uh, Mike. Who are we taking though at 31? Like, is it Cooper? If Johnny, if Amarius Mims falls, he's my favorite. He's my favorite guy. I'm sorry, and I'm stuck on he's- Johnny Newton, bro. I can't help it. But guess what we just did? We both went in the trenches. Oh my God. Which is what the 49ers are gonna do. They're gonna draft in the trenches. And that's that's how we started the show. That's how we started the show. Full circle. Based off of the trenches. That's you start the way you end. That's beautiful, Wayne. Wayne, man. High five, bro. Oh, we go that high five. We go. (laughs) Let's do our Maki dive.
we got it all, bro. We lock step, man. This this is what we do, man. This is what we do, man. I love it. I absolutely love it. We go in the trenches. We get either one of these guys, Newton or Mims. I'm going home happy. I'm going home happy. It, it's like Koserik is going to get another guy, or Forster will finally get his first guy. Yeah, <laughs> like like a top guy. That's it. Hope you guys enjoyed the show. We talked about some guys that could fall, why they could fall. We talked about the injuries, but we also talked about their pros and cons. Hopefully, we got you guys excited about somebody out there. Hopefully, we got you guys excited about somebody. And if we didn't, I don't know what y'all watching for, man. Honestly, I, I can't. We can't. We can't break down any better than that right there, man. Um, I will literally get up and jump for joy if Mims is the guy. I will literally get up and jump. For joy. I'm with you. I'm with you. Um, if it's any one of these five guys, I'm jumping for joy. But I'm with you. If Mims is picked, I'm cool with it. I am. If Mims falls and he's picked, I'm I'm happy because now the Niners have an opportunity to mold the guy just like they did with Aaron Banks. You sit him, red shirt him one year, you bring him in, and you let him learn the ropes. And guess who he'll be learning under? Now, it's not just Chris Forrester doing the molding. He's got big train <laughs> on the opposite side chomping in the young kid, kid's ear trent gets to be a mentor again you know and so beautiful you know that's what that's what you want so i'm cool with the amirius mims pick but if johnny newton is is that you at number 31 and i know we talked about getting a guy like cooper dejean do we need that wild card back there do we He's not a lockdown corner, but he's definitely a lockdown defensive, like a wild card. Like, you know what I mean? I will give him this. He's probably an upgrade over both of our safeties. I'll okay. That's, that. that's, a, that's fair. I'll give him that. That's yeah. fair. And, and our nickel as well. I think he'd be a good, I think, yes. yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so that you'll upgrade at three positions if, if you draft him. So that, that's a good value. Uh, that, that might be another one you want to think, but I just don't see the Niners going corner over trenches. I don't. Right. Exactly. And that's where reality sets in and you got to take all emotions out of it. That's what you got to look at. Look at the tendencies of this team. They like the trenches. They like right. the trenches. Great show. They love the trenches. Listen, man, that's going to do it for us, man. Next time y'all hear from us, it's going to be on draft day. Ooh, man, draft, on draft day preview. Day. Can't wait. New hairstyle for me. All right. So okay. Last time y'all see this looking like this. I'm going to try to get a haircut. The beard I'm and everything gonna be all shaped up. We're gonna be ain't nobody dope as me. I'm hey. so we're gonna it's be all so clean, day. clean. Exactly. <clears throat> we appreciate y'all. We love y'all. Thank y'all very much. Wayne, I'm ready to go, bro. Live all the time. Kicking it with, with the, fam. the fam, bro. Mm -hmm. I'm breezy. That's breezy. I'm Mike. And this, this is the BAM show. Peace. Peace.